first lifted his eyes and saw a bird in flight. And surely that day, he began to dream. A dream of flight, of a new freedom and a new threshold. Soaring in the playground of birds and angels. A dream of reaching out and touching the face of God. From that day onward, men have tried to live the dream. But gravity has been a stubborn foe. Have you ever dreamed you could fly? to conquer the mystery of human flight and soar through space without wings, strings, or camera tricks. Also this evening, you won't just walk. You at home will actually participate and be a part of the magic. Later, by simply touching your television screen, you'll take part in an illusion, David, and experience the magic right at your own fingertips. I've got to try that myself. Join us for the magic of David Copperfield. fly like that. And tonight, without any movie special effects, I'm going to try. The first thing we're going to do is... Uh... Come here. Come here. Give me this. She's in the front row. Good sport. If, if you see any celery between my teeth, let me know. We have a brand new illusion. It combines music, movement, dance, and magic. I hope you enjoy it. And you watch closely.
I'm living way beyond my ways and means, living in the zone of the in-betweens. I can see the flashes in the frozen ocean, the static charge of cold emotion. Magic of David Copperfield is brought to you by the Clorox Company, with the tradition of providing quality household products to American families. They say this detergent with bleach alternative gets socks really white, but I wondered how it compared to my Clorox bleach. So, I got some dirty socks. I washed this one in detergent with bleach alternative, and this one in Clorox bleach and my regular detergent. And look! The sock washed in Clorox bleach is cleaner. Why am I not surprised? Lighting, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Could I have some moon lighting, please? <laughs> Thank you very much. While we're here, Let's all sing Kumbaya. <laughs> I got another idea, I got another song. Here we go, everybody's gonna sing. You ready to sing? Here we go. There was a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name, oh. Everybody!
That was stupid. Time to go to my warehouse. I've got great news. Thank you very much. Hey, it's time to do something in the middle of the audience. Here we go. Come on. What's your name? I'm sorry? Sahili. Big hand for Sahili. All right, Steve here, Sahili. Hey, we, we didn't we didn't prearrange it, did we? No. no. I've got a, a a pen for you. I need you to take this uh, pad. It's a it's a blank pad. I need you to look straight at me. I need you to think. Just think of a geometric shape, okay? And draw it on that pad. I won't look. You make sure I don't peek, okay? All right. See what you've drawn. Can everybody see it? Now turn it upside down in your lap so it's hidden from my view. Is it hidden from my view? Okay, you can recap the pen. Yeah. I'm going to show you something kind of interesting. I've got a tin pan here and some ink. Now normally we draw with ink, and tonight we're going to make a drawing in an unusual way. I'm going to try to draw with my mind. But I need all your help. I need everybody to concentrate on the shape that Sahili drew. And if you concentrate hard enough, hopefully you'll be able to see the shape in this blob of ink. You have to use your imagination. You have to use a lot of imagination. Concentrate. How many 
many of you out there have seen the classic motion picture, Citizen Kane? Yeah. Well, one of my all-time heroes is Orson Welles. Now, Orson Welles made a lot of great movies, but his first was Citizen Kane. He wrote it, he directed it, he produced it, he starred in it, and people called it the greatest movie of all time. Now, Orson Welles made Citizen Kane back in 1941, when he was 26 years old. Pretty amazing. Not many people know this, but Orson was a terrific magician, and I got a chance to meet him when he was about 65 years old. That's me over there. Now, I told Orson, wouldn't it be great if we could both do magic together? And he looked at me, he said, David, maybe someday we will. Well, before we ever could, Orson passed away. And the day after he died, I got a letter in the mail. It was from Orson. Well, David, I finally made it to the hereafter. I feel like a kid. I'm surrounded by beautiful blonde starlets, which is exactly what I'm here after. <laughs> I'd love to do some magic with you when you have the time. Enclosed are some illusions I thought might be good for your next special. Give me a call. I'm staying at Shirley MacLaine's place. <laughs> she never uses it. Here's looking down at you, your friend, Horace. Well, tonight, I thought I'd place that call. It's David Copperfield. Uh, can, can you talk? Oh, uh, what's that? Our connection's not clear. You say I'm not clear? Not really. Am I any clearer now? Ladies and gentlemen, not an imposter. The real Orson Welles. Oh, Dave, I'm in a terrible mess. I'm directing a picture and I've... Oh, I've got 90 million things to take care of. I've really got my hands full. You can see what I mean. Looks pretty good. Hey, Orson, I want to put your illusions in a musical comedy routine on my next special. Yeah. But the producer thinks the tricks are boring and doesn't believe they'll work. But those tricks are not only astonishing, they're absolutely practical. I know I invented them. Yeah, well, he has other ideas. He wants to colorize Citizen Kane and make a sequel starring Pee Wee Herman. Very interesting. Tell that myopic, provincial numbskull to focus his attention on me for a minute and I'll break down his skepticism. I'm going to do a little magic. Great. A card trick, as a matter of fact. I just have to have a deck of cards in my pocket. This is going to be cool. Little card trick, ladies. Now here, we have a little magical applause powder. I neglected to mention that all our tricks are done by the spirit. Whenever you see this magical applause powder, I wish you'd make that beautiful sound of the palms of your hands because nothing cheers the spirits up quite so much when they get done with a difficult trick and sit back on their astral planes. All right, Dave? Yeah. I want you to catch the deck, would you please? Oh. Very neatly caught. Oh, clumsy, you dropped a couple of them. Oh, sorry. Oh, there's one over there, Dave. Yeah. Good. Now. All right, you pick up the deck. I got him. I want you to take a rubber band and wrap the deck in the rubber band. Will you please? You will find a rubber band in your left-hand coat pocket. This pocket? That's right. Yeah. I want somebody to select a card. I'm not going to force the card. It's going to be freely selected. In order to prove that it isn't forced, I'm going to have to turn around, yeah. take the deck, which is wrapped in a rubber band, toss it over his left shoulder into the darkness of the theater. Whoever catches the deck is it. Okay? Okay. One, two, three. Whoa! Catch him, catch him. Remarkable fielding. It's a good catch. Sir, will you hand the deck of cards to a lady who may have to be adjacent? I need a female for this experiment. Thank you very much, sir. Madam, you have the deck? She does. A complete deck of pasteboard that is encased in a rubber band. I am going to ask you, madam, to uh, hold the deck behind you. Uh, listen to me very carefully because I want you to get the instructions correctly. Do you hear me? Are you ready? Uh, I say, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I know it's silly uh, talking back to a picture, but... Uh, I'm glad you are, madam. Just extend your deck to the gentleman, please, and have him Stand up. withdraw any card at all. A free choice. I want him just to reach behind there and take the card. The gentleman next to you, any gentleman at all, just take the card. It's important to know that all the cards are different. Different, yes? Different? Yes. Take card. Any card. Good choice. Dave, I'll thank you to permit me to do my own tricks. <laughs> Sorry, Arson. That's all right. Now, madam, will you take the deck? 
Take off the rubber band, give the deck a shuffle, and sir, you, the gentleman next to the lady, uh, the gentleman who took the card from the deck, will you hold the card up over your head, please? The card you freely selected about six feet over your head, please, so everybody in the audience can see it. I won't speak. Good. Everybody see the card? Well, nearly everybody, everybody around there knows what the card is. Uh, sir, will you take the card? Uh, madam, will you extend your deck, sir? Will you insert the card into the lady's deck? Thank you, madam. Give the deck a good shuffle and come right up on the stage, please, madam. As you shuffle the cards, walk up on the stage. It's two things to do at once, but just go on shuffling the cards right up here, please. Thank you, madam. Oops, oops. Ah, I'll back up a little. Madam. Have you ever been hypnotized? No. I say, have you ever been hypnotized? No. Look me in the yokes, the eyes. Sim Salabim. Aligazan. Yabba Dabba Do. She feels no pain. You take the cards. The rubber band off the cards, please. The cards well shuffled. The freely selected card shuffled into the deck. Will you throw the deck, madam, on the count of three? At my right eye, right up here on the screen. I know you can do it at my right eye. Take the deck, throw it at my right eye on the count of three. One, two, two and a half, three. And your card, madam, the ace of clubs. Uh, that's not it. That wasn't it, was it? The, uh, what was it? What was the card? I beg your pardon, what was the card, please? It was a jack of spades. You know, it's remarkable. But on the screen, some objects enlarge quite unusually. Your card again, madam, the Jack of Spades. Correct? <laughs> Thought I wouldn't be in the show, didn't she? <laughs> Tell me, Dad. <laughs> Tonight, without any bidding or trickery or movie special effects, David Copperfield will attempt to throw off the chains of gravity, leave the earth and fly, and stand by to touch your television screens and actually take part in an incredible illusion right in your own home with the magic of David Copperfield. So I saw this. Right now, we're going to do something really cool, and you and I are going to do it together. So far, you've been watching David do magic before a live audience. Now, it's your turn to participate. In a moment, all you have to do is simply touch your television screen. As unbelievable as it sounds, David will try to make the magic happen right in your own home. That's right. Tonight, you've seen me choose people from the audience. Now, I'm choosing you. It's important because if you don't play along, the next few minutes will be totally meaningless. Here's the plan. If there are several of you in the room, choose one person to participate. Right now, stand up and come close to your TV. Close enough to actually touch your screen. Do it now and touch my finger. That wasn't the cool part. You can let go of the screen now. But don't move away because in a moment, by touching the screen, you and I are going to do something really amazing. Now take a good look at these destinations of flight and listen carefully. Here's the idea. Tonight, you're going to put your finger here and fly from place to place around the circle and I'm going to find you. The amazing thing is, even though you're at home and I'm here, I'll know exactly where you are. There are many places to fly to. A star, the clouds, a moon, and so on. Now, I want you to think of a secret number between 5 and 15. Any number between 5 and 15. It's your choice. I have no idea what number you're thinking of. In a moment, you're going to move your finger the same number of times as your secret number. For example, if your secret number was 9, you'd move 9 times. 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, bringing you to the island. If it were six, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are a lot of possibilities. This is your last chance to participate, so come real close to your TV so you can touch it. Stand over here so everyone can see. Right now, put your finger here and get ready to move the amount equal to your secret number. Move as I count. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, and so on. When you reach your secret number, stop and keep your finger there. Good. Now get ready to move in the other direction. The same number you just moved. The amount equivalent to your secret number. Move in this direction as I count. Ready? One, two, three, four, 
five, so on. When you finish, leave your finger on the final place you've touched. Now I know that you're not in the rainbow, so I'll take it away. And I know you're not in the castle, so I'll remove it. And I know you're not in the mountains, so I'll take that away. And I know you're not in the pyramids either, so I'll remove them too. In a moment, I'll ask you to move four times, either in this direction or that direction, whichever direction you want. Move four times, ready? One, two, three, four. And keep your finger there. Now I know you're not in the Eiffel Tower, and I know you're not in the clouds, and I know you're not in the city either. Keep your finger touching the screen. I'm gonna take this arrow and put it right here. Remember, you chose your own secret number and you flew at random around the screen. But believe it or not, even though you're at home and I'm here, I'm gonna find you. Keep touching and watch. You're on the moon. The dream of human flight. Next. With all the people up in the front, you've been able to see the show so good. I'm just curious. People in the back row, you probably forgot your binoculars. We're going to invite some people to watch from on stage. You three rows, maybe the ushers can help. Why don't you stand up? Come with me. Come right here. I want you to watch. You're going to get a real close look as we have seats for you on stage. All right. Nice to see you. Yo. Hi. You want to come? Jump. Why don't you show them the way? They're going to watch the illusion from the backstage. Right this way. Right this way. Hello. You come with me, please. Stand right over here. And you can keep going backstage. What, what is your name? Bambi. I'm sorry? Bambi. Bambi. <laughs> your name is Bambi? Uh -huh. Are you serious? I swear. And you must be Thumper. <laughs> Miss, fine. Bambi, your name is really Bambi? Yeah. I like that. It's fun to say. Examine this big plexiglass box. Make sure it's solid. Go around the back. You examine the back side. Mitch, you examine the front. I do want to go home with some of these props. <laughs> Examine this side, go for it. Are you sure you're not Thumper? <laughs> Come over here. I want you to examine the lid. Yeah, maybe you too. This is the, uh, the lid of the box. Make sure it's solid, nice, nice and strong. Lift it up over your head. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Come over here. Have a seat right here, Mitch. Uh, Bambi, you too. Before you do, I'm just curious. Have you ever had any dreams where you fly? No. Perfect, good. Have a seat right here, uh, Bambi. Even when you were a kid, you never dreamed you could fly? When you were a little kid. Good. Mitch, your job is to keep an eye on this plexiglass box. Make sure nobody tampers with it. Okay. Bambi, your job is to keep an eye on Mitch. Make sure he doesn't break the box. <laughs> and our committee from the audience is seated behind the curtain? Good. Do you ever just sit around and dream? I do all the time. When I was a kid, I didn't think I fit in at all. I was an only child, and I lived in these apartments where there weren't any other kids my own age. So I'd sit outside by myself and dream so I wouldn't feel so alone. You know my best dream? My best dream was to fly, not in an airplane or a balloon, but to push against the air, ride the wind, and fly. Do you ever fly in your dreams? Even today, when I feel lonely or insecure, I go back to that dream, and it helps me leave my problems and insecurities behind. All the answers are up there. I'm going to show you some people who share my dream and never gave up. Um, it's the laws of great cosmic motion, which I have rediscovered. And it's my strong conviction that by utilizing these inner universal forces, we shall all be able to fly like the birds. And I am now starting a school to train the children to develop these powers while they are young. Now we're off. Forward. Relax the head. Hit from up, hit from the solar panel. 
Lexus in front and the chest. Forward. Hit from the base of the spine. Those are the two dynamic centers. The solar plexus and the base of the spine. In order to prove these laws, Mr. Powell will now attempt a short uh, flight from the treetop. Now, Al, spread your wings. Now jump. Head forward. Lift your feet. Good.
Orson Welles, CBS, the folks at Clorox, and especially all of you at home for sharing my dream. Good night. The magic of David Copperfield has been brought to you by the Clorox Company with the tradition.